the velocity dip a little. Yes. You know, there's some rumblings with the Jays that might be a fit. Be easier or harder to get him? You know, less of a name out of the minor league system is my point because of the velocity dip. Could they do it? I think they could. And I think, Kevin, for me, what's what's really interesting with Syndergaard is he's making around $20 million this season. So you, you take that into thirds, it's still a pretty significant amount mm-hmm. of money. And if the Jays are willing to take on all of the salary, then you probably don't have to give up the same level of prospect in return. I, I think with the Jays, it's still true. They have a good amount of infield prospects to move. And mm-hmm. Groshans, his numbers have been just okay. I think Tiedemann's having a really good year. Sure. And I think he is someone that the Jays are going to be very, very reluctant to give up. One thing about the Jays that I love from the standpoint of what they can actually do is, is they've got in, in Moreno a piece that I think is extraordinary to offer around. If, if I were Ross Atkins right now, uh, and and I would not at all suggest that you would not have to give up Moreno to get Syndergaard. I want to be clear about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but if I'm Ross, I would call the other teams in Major League Baseball and say I've got for you a potential All Star catcher, very similar from where I sit to what Kiebert Ruiz was for the Dodgers last year, mm-hmm. and Kiebert Ruiz got them a year and a half of Trey Turner and half a year of Scherzer. Mm-hmm. I would I would look around and say okay. Okay, Detroit Tigers, I would put Moreno in play if you gave us Tarek Skubal, who would be in my rotation for this year and for years to come. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of move I would make. Or in a rare contender for contender trade, Houston needs a catcher. Mm -hmm. You say, all right, Houston, I want Christian Javier. That To me, if you are trading a potential frontline catcher, which I believe Moreno is, at least at the very least, he is a league average or better starting catcher. That's a very six years of that is incredibly valuable. And so with Houston and their pitching situation with with McCullers on his way back, they do have a surplus. Yeah. Now, how often do we ever hear the term pitching surplus? It's always very temporary, but the reality is they could move somebody if they really had to. And if James Click says, you know what? I don't want to give up one of my prospects, but I would give up a major league piece to help balance all of this out. I think to me, I think one of the biggest questions, and it's again, it's impossible for us to know exactly what the offer is for everywhere, but I would think, and Ross probably knows this already, what is the market value of Moreno? Because when you've got an all-star in Kirk, I, I really, and I certainly, I appreciate the possibility you could have Kirk and Moreno on the roster for a long time, as long as you have Kirk mm-hmm. maybe doing some DH days. I get that. But if you have the ability, you, you could get a DH. You could trade for Josh Bell. You could sure. trade for yeah. a Christian Walker at some point in time. Just... If you have a piece that can give you a starting pitcher controllable that you need like a Tarek Skubal, I would say Moreno to Detroit for Skubal is a really interesting concept that I think has, I think that it just has some value on both sides. Yeah, it's interesting hearing you say that because part of me, I, you know, I've also wondered if, I, I think we've always thought that Ross's approach is, okay, I'm going to call on, I'm going to call in Chicago and, and what do you need for Ian Happ? And uh, David Robertson, I wonder if part of his discussion isn't calling up a team and saying, "Hey, what would you give me for Moreno?" Right, like, right. What What would you give me? What would you give me for Gabriel Moreno? And you know, not market a guy. I'm not in favor of using that phrase necessarily. But if you can, if you know what the market is for Moreno, now you can approach teams, right, to get your maybe more advanced piece. You can you can approach Chicago and. They say, we want Moreno. You go, well, yeah, but you know what? I know what his value is, and I've got more value with him for another team. I think that may be one of the reasons Ross has taken so long to make a make a bullpen move this year. Because last year, he was aggressive with the bullpen. He certainly doesn't – he's certainly not afraid to trade prospects. We we saw that last year with Austin Martin, and we saw it this year as well with, with Matt Chapman. And I wonder if that isn't – now that you've mentioned this, if that maybe isn't part of the angle here. Ooh. And also remember, we, uh, obviously, we just saw the Jays and Tigers play over the weekend. The Tigers, while not a very good team right now, do have a very good bullpen. Oh. And mm-hmm. so I take four four arms off that bullpen right now would be better than what I have in Toronto, other than Romano. Correct. I think. So when when you have that conversation, this is where there could be a, a nice foundation. Moreno plus maybe one more one yeah. more prospect, and then say, okay, Scooble plus a Joe Jimenez, Scooble plus. Michael Fulmer. And then you start to build out that deal and, and there's a lot of value on both sides.